What is up everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Rocket Vlogs or to the Wildman Rocketry YouTube channel because this video is going on both of them. My name is Braden Carlson and if there's one thing people who watch my channel know about me it's that my favorite rocket is the Wildman Punisher. The three inch Punisher always had this beautiful allure to me because it was small enough to take on check baggage. You could fly it on like high impulse eyes all the way up to L motors. And of course the four inch Punisher is great on M's. The five inch Punisher is also fantastic with the 98 millimeter motor mount. We just watched a five inch Punisher fly on an O3400 at balls and it was fantastic. Overall, it's just a great rocket design. And unfortunately, recently, my three inch Punisher met an untimely demise. That rocket had a lot of flights on it. And of course, there's always some desire to push the envelope just a little bit further, right? I'm happy to announce that I reached out to Tim from Wildman and we teamed up to create something just a little bit spicier than a three inch Punisher. And that is this, the Wildman 2.6 inch Punisher Rocket Vlogs Edition. It's a 2.6 inch diameter rocket with that proper five to one nose cone and a 54 millimeter motor mount. All said and done with recovery electronics and everything, it only weighs about three pounds and yes, the 54 2800 case fits in here. So that means it can fly on anything from H to L. Better still is the fact that Wildman is offering this rocket as a complete package, including parachute, shock cord, an aero pack retainer, rail buttons, quick links, eye bolts, and even a tube of West 610 epoxy. So you have pretty much everything you need to build and fly this rocket. Now we're gonna do a build video on this, but if that already sounds good to you and you're already sold, I like your style and you can go to wildmanrocketry.com right now and purchase one of these, but you know I gotta sweeten the deal for you a little bit. See that price tag on the Wildman website? We're gonna wipe that away. If you use the discount code ROCKETVLOGS, you can get this whole package, the entire recovery package with epoxy and everything for $250. Now, if you prefer to set up your own recovery and everything like that, you can buy it as a bare bones fiberglass kit just like the rest of the Wildman fleet as well. I'm super, super excited. This thing is so light that putting an L motor in it sounds absolutely bonkers. And I truly, truly hope that somebody does it relatively soon. Now, let me show you how to build it. We'll start this build with the motor mount assembly. As usual, we wanna ensure all of our parts are clean and free of manufacturing debris. And the easiest way to do that is by throwing everything in the bathtub and then letting it dry. Alternatively, you can wipe everything down inside and out with isopropyl alcohol if you don't want to wait for water to dry before you start your build. Once you're ready to begin building, it's time to sand the centering rings and motor tube using around 120 grit sandpaper to promote a good solid composite bond between all of the components. While you're sanding the centering rings, sand a notch into one to allow your shock cord to pass through. This will become your forward centering ring. Once all of your motor mount components are sanded, you'll want to wipe them down with alcohol and get them as clean as possible. I'm wearing gloves because unlike most other Wildman kits, this rocket will not receive internal fillets given the tiny working space between the motor tube and the airframe tube. You may opt to add internal fillets with the injection method if you'd like. However, with a good proper prep bond surface and well-sized external fillets, they're not necessary for this rocket. For the first assembly step, I glued the aero pack retainer in place using JB Weld and used the excess JB Weld to place and bond the rear centering ring too. Starting here allows the easiest install of the aero pack retainer given the motor to airframe diameter ratio. In addition, it ensures proper placement of your rear centering ring by butting it against the retainer body. Once the rear ring and retainer have cured, measure and mark 8.5 inches from the top of the rear ring or simply use one of the fins to ensure the forward centering ring is in proper position. Now, simply cut your shock cord to the desired length for your fin can, I did about 12 feet, and slide it through your upper centering ring notch and glue the centering ring in place. Ensure that your shock cord leader is securely bonded to the motor tube both below and forward of the upper centering ring. However, use caution to ensure that you're not letting any epoxy stray to where the fins will be bonded. Use isopropyl or denatured alcohol to clean up any rogue epoxy before it cures. Once the motor tube assembly is completely cured, ensure the motor tube between the centering rings is free of epoxy or debris and clean it once more with alcohol before it goes in the rocket to ensure a proper and strong bond of the fin roots to the motor tube. Sand any debris away if needed, then sand the inside of the airframe tube to prepare it for bonding the motor tube assembly and clean it with alcohol as well. 
Once it's clean and ready for bonding, apply a bead of epoxy around the inside of the tube at the base where the rear ring will be seated and forward of the fin slots where the forward ring will be seated. Insert the motor mount assembly with a bit of rotation to ensure all bonding surfaces are sufficiently coated with epoxy. However, take caution not to block any of the fin slots with your Kevlar shock cord leader. Once that epoxy cures, vigorously sand both the airframe and fins where the external fillets will be. This joint is the most important joint to your rocket's survival, so you want to ensure it's thoroughly sanded and clean before applying fillets. It's highly recommended that you wear gloves while working with prep components once they're clean to prevent contaminating them with any oils from your hands. After sanding and prepping the fins and airframe, apply a bead of epoxy to the root of a fin and slide it through the slot. You can use masking tape to keep the fin straight and vertical while the epoxy cures. Repeat this process for all three fins and allow the epoxy to completely cure before proceeding. Next up, we're going to prep the rocket for external fillets. I used a 1 and 1 8 inch chrome socket to size and pull my fillets to give them a radius of just over half an inch. Using your fillet making tool, mar or mark a reference line in place and tape up your fins as you see in the video. The beautiful part of using the provided West 610 if you get the combo deal is that it doesn't sag, so you can do all three sets of fillets at once. After taping your fillet lines, give your bonding surfaces one last pass with alcohol to ensure they're clean and ready for fillets. Next, simply dispense your epoxy into the fillet channels as you see here and carefully pull the fillets into shape with one long smooth motion, rounding the leading and trailing edges as you do so. If it doesn't go to plan at first time, don't panic, it's fine. Just clean the fillet tool with alcohol and attempt another pass. If there are any low spots, you can add a bit of epoxy to those spots but make sure when you re-pull the fillet, you do the entire length of the fillet over and over again. That way you're not creating issues in the middle of it. Once the fillets are to your desired shape, remove the masking tape and allow them to cure. If you want to finalize shapes before the epoxy cures completely, wait for the epoxy to begin solidifying and very, very carefully use a gloved finger dipped in alcohol to manipulate the shape of your fillet. I use this method to round the leading and trailing edges to my desired shape, but it is extremely easy to mess up. So if you're not convinced you're gentle enough to pull this off, if you're bad at operation, you might want to skip it and make final adjustments with sanding and body filler. Speaking of which, once they're cured, it's time to sand the fillets. If you lay them out nicely, very little sanding will be required. However, if you have corrections to make to get the shape desirable, body fillers like Bondo or Evercoat glazing putty are a great way to quickly fill and sand problem areas. In addition, small amounts of epoxy can be used to fill issues and then be sanded into shape after it cures. You can take as much time on this step as you'd like. How perfect your fillets need to turn out is solely up to your discretion. I will warn you though, it can be quite obsessive. To prepare for shear pin and rail button drilling, place one of the electronics bay lids onto the end of the nose cone shoulder coupler and slide that assembly into your nose cone, marking where the coupler stops. This will be where you glue the rocket's vent band, so you want to ensure it's in the nose cone as far as it's going to go and that it's seated nicely and will actually come back out. Just as before, sand and prep both bonding surfaces, clean them, and epoxy your vent band in place on the coupler. Use a straight edge to draw a line up from the tip of each of the fins. These lines will mark where your shear pin holes get drilled. Then draw a line up the entire length of the airframe tube centered between two fins for your rail button placement. Next, we're going to drill some shear pin holes. I like to offset one shear pin by about half an inch to key the rocket's alignment both on the fin can and the nose cone but that's up to you. Drill one hole at a time and insert a shear pin before moving on to the next one to ensure you don't misalign any of the holes as you go. Using the lines on the airframe, mark and drill three aligned 1 8 inch vent holes for your electronics bay while you're at it. 
Now on to rail buttons. When you're drilling the rear rail button hole, ensure you're drilling the hole forward of the rear centering ring and aero pack retainer. You don't want to drill through your retainer. Drill the hole undersized compared to the screw diameter to ensure it properly grabs the fiberglass as you're inserting it, but be very careful not to drill through the motor tube. The screws for the rail buttons are much longer than the space between the airframe and motor tube, so you'll need to cut the screws down. You're going to repeat the process for the forward rail button to ensure they are properly aligned. If you misalign them, don't panic. You can fill the hole with epoxy, sand it smooth, and try another hole. It happens sometimes. But for the forward screw, it's a good idea to insert a piece of aluminum tape over the screw's interior protrusion so that it does not hang up on or damage your Kevlar shock cord. While you have the drill out, drill a 1 8 inch vent hole in the airframe and in the nose cone as well for pressure equalization as the rocket ascends. You don't want to create a vacuum in there. Once all the holes are drilled and marked, either mask or remove your rail buttons and paint the rocket how you'd like. After the paint cures, replace the rail buttons and ensure they are sufficiently attached and cannot be wiggled or easily loosened by hand. You can add a dab of epoxy or CA to the screw threads in the bottom of the rail button to ensure a strong and secure fit if needed. This is extremely, extremely important because very bad things can happen if your rail buttons break loose on the pad. Ask me how I know, I dare you. Next, assemble the electronics bay just as you would with any other rocket. I use 1024 threaded rod cut into 7 inch pieces for this, but you can use whatever flavor threaded rod you feel most desirable. Drill out the pre-marked holes in your av bay lids and install all the hardware. You'll want to cut down the included welded eye bolts to keep them out of the way from your electronics bay sled on the inside. And for all nuts that aren't to be regularly removed, use a dab of thread locker to keep things secure. Next. Tie a quick link to one end of your upper shock cord. I use a cinch knot, then back wrap the tail with electrical tape as an added measure of security, but again, whatever knot floats your boat. Then on the other end, repeat the process with the welded eye bolt that goes to the aluminum nose tip. Slide the eye bolt down in the nose cone, drop a bit of thread locker into the aluminum nose tip, and then tighten the nose tip onto the nose cone. You might need to use like a long screwdriver to hold the eye bolt in place, but make sure you get it as tight as you can. Also, don't panic about the nose tip in the video being white. I painted it. Tie another quick link to the end of your drogue side shock cord and attach it to the bottom eye bolt on your electronics bay. You'll do the same for the main shock cord, but first, let's have a little chat about Wildman head end dual deploy. Wildman always recommends attaching the parachute directly to the top of your electronics bay for a reliable and repeatable head end dual deployment. As you can see here, the parachute has its own quick link and is entirely separate of the upper shock cord. You can attach the parachute elsewhere on the shock cord if you'd like, but your results may vary. The parachute directly to the electronics bay eye bolt on top is the official Wildman way when it comes to head end deployment. And that's it. That's your Wildman 2.6 inch Punisher Rocket Vlogs edition. Never gonna get tired of saying that. I'm so, so excited for this thing. Uh, I've wanted to do a 2.6 inch Punisher with a 54 for a long time. So the fact that it's not just going to be something for me, but something that all of you can order is awesome. And again, if you want to get one of these kits with all the recovery stuff, the retainer, hardware, quick links, rail buttons, and a tube of West 610 epoxy for just $250, use the discount code ROCKETVLOGS, all one word, at wildmanrocketry.com. The link will be in the description. My name is Braden Carlson. Thank you so much for tuning into another Rocket Vlogs and or Wildman video. I think that pretty much covers it all. So if you want a 2.6 inch Punisher, don't wait. Go get one from wildmanrocketry.com right now. And uh, I'll see you at the launch site. Bring a big K or an L motor. It'll be a good time.